right through the plank you're working. Um, we're going to also use a brace oh, and yeah. bit, but that takes a little more time. Out. And we'll try that too. of farm tools I have on display today. Everybody knows about our wood buckets and our shoulder yoke to put on and fetch some wood or take rocks out of the farm. from Finley, Ohio, where was found in a burial mound some years ago. And this is a copy of it. It's very fancy with inlay and so on, and uh, would eventually be buried with the chief. It serves two functions. It's a ceremonial hatchet you could actually use, but most chiefs wouldn't actually use it. It's for ceremonies. And it also is a peace pipe. You can put your tobacco in there, and this is hollow. So it serves two functions, so at a ceremony, the chief would use this pipe and pass it around to the other elders. And we have farm tools, our uh, two-man saw for sawing logs. bar is swept over your head and hits the pile of wick and shake, shakes the seeds off. Like so. And you would have a party with six or seven fire pants gathered Stakes uh, working on large logs. And my ants. This would actually be used to trim a log. And you would just uh, stand over the log and trim off.
floor uh, with dust and everything, so she would eventually talk him into making a puncheon floor out of logs, and she just placed the logs onto the floor, onto the soil, put some soil around it so it doesn't wiggle, and a bunch of leaves would make your floor. Unusual to see this is certainly nothing that people would use at this time, but our entire house is uh, plastered on expansion land. things right, things would line up, go together, and your tree nail would be pounded through here, make a nice strong joint. This is called a shoulder joint, I can get it apart, and basically we have an offset. This would be very familiar for barns mostly because you need the extra strength to support the weight of all your hay and uh, animals on say the second floor and you have this little offset so when you put your beam together the vertical uh, beam will support the horizontal beam with that little notch and then you have your tree nail to pound in i have two tree nails one's just round which was most common but you've heard the old saying square pin in a round hole. This is a square piece and actually these were used for extra strength and permanency. You pound that in and it would take such force that uh, you would never get this tree nail out. It would have to be drilled out to ever change that joint. This is a log from the back of the house. Uh, basically, uh, the tree was dead for some years and hollow. The uh, bees got in it and had a hive there. And last winter it fell over in a storm. And uh, this spring I went out and decided we'd cut it up. Uh, last thing I talked about my fro and I need a mallet for this and this is how we make roofing shingles you would get your fro set up and just pound it down and that would split off a shingle say half an inch three quarters of an inch thick and you'd shave that a little and that would be your roofing shingle. When you were building your house, you would take a week or two before it was constructed and make hundreds of these shingles so that when uh, the frame was up and your roof beams were in, you could get that covered with a good roof so the water didn't get in your house. 
is a Frobisbury common. This is a straight one. But they also have round froze. And that would be something you would make a uh, barrel with or our, uh, water buckets because you would have the piece you would break off would actually have a curve to it. 